Welcome back to another edition of the podcast for our Game Week 41 National League predictions and, of course, Roundup. As you can probably tell, I've got a massive grin on my face after I've just defeated the league leaders to stop them at winning the league at the Shea. Um, of course, we're going to discuss that as I'm a Halifax fan. Um, Paul, thanks for joining me once again tonight. Um, how are you doing, of course, midweek? Probably wasn't the best result that you were well, the result you were hoping for. Uh, no, I mean, listen, we play you know, you, you, playing Bromley at home, you've always got to sort of back yourself that you might get some points, but all in all, you know, they're second in the league for a reason. They went down to 10 men after only 17 minutes, they lost their goalkeeper, Grant Smith. Fortunately, they did have a goalie on the bench. Not every team in the National League uh, employs that position on the bench, and um. Bromley did, and and fortunately, you know, for them, the, the lads played quite well on his debut. And yeah, Willstone, I believe I wasn't there. I unfortunately I was I was out doing something else because it was such a hastily arranged match on Monday morning. But um, yeah, they, you know, Willstone probably missed a bit of creativity of some of their international players that would have been in the team, the likes of Taryn Alaraki and Nathan Ferguson, Dylan De Silva, recent signing from from Torquay. So. He said he still put out a, good, good, a strong side. We had to play against 10 men for the majority of the game, created chances. But and Michael Cheek and quality up top told in the end, Luke, and uh, you you can't give him a sniff. They've given him one decent chance. Well, it's really half chance if you look at it. He's hit, hit the ball low and hard across the goal, bottom corner. They go away with three points and they're on the tails of, of Barnett and, and getting that second place. Yeah, they certainly are. Of course, that's an area as well where you've got Barnett and Bromley in second and third. Do you think that's kind of wrapped up now, the top three, where Chesterfield, of course, we know they're going to win the league probably this Saturday. Um, and then you've got Bromley and Barnett. Do you think those two sides have solidified their places for that uh, one less game in the playoffs? I think so. I think they're now going to try and... Do what they can to uh, to get that second place. So they've got home advantage right the way through in into the to the final. So, you know, Bromley are going to fancy that themselves at home on their pitch and the way they play. You know, Barnet not so much. Um, I think they're sort of they play out open, expansive football, which means they can play home or away. But yeah, I think Bromley are just a tough, strong team, and I, no one will want to be playing them right now. You know, they they're on a bit of form there. They're going well. You know, they've made good additions over the last few months and I can see them getting a second place and, and really pushing to get promoted this year. There, for me, and it's a big if, because although we won last night and won good from, as I know as a Halifax fan since I've been supporting them, you don't get carried away because it can just change like that. And we've, we've seen the dynamic of the leagues just changed within one game week or a couple of games where we think sides are going to finish where they are or do better and then they just fall off a cliff. So I'm not taking it for granted at all. We've still got a lot of work to do. But if Halifax did finish inside the playoffs, the only side that I would fear would be Bromley and that's going away because I just think any side that goes away to Bromley is probably, I think, besides Chesterfield, the toughest place to go. Um, is, is that something that you'd agree with? And maybe if you were a Halifax or an Alty or an older shot, or maybe if Gates and old them get in, um, would Bromley be the side that you'd fear? Or would there be nobody? Or is there anyone else that you might fear? Um, the... Yes, yes and no. I mean, the Barney and Bromley do very well in cup competition. So they're used to that sort of knockout football scenario. Um, Bromley probably are even are better at it than Barney. Barney have fallen short last couple of years in the trophy, for example, whereas Bromley have gone on to win it. Whereas, Brom, you know, uh, and Bromley have got experience of the playoffs, which is going to be vitally important this year. They, you know, they don't want to sort of lose out like they did last year. So they're going to be looking at that as a bit of a motivation tool, I suppose. Listen, the things like the, the, the play, the, the teams like Halifax, for instance, they're going to be on, uh, on, on a sort of, uh, of an opinion that they can be anyone because they're coming into playoffs with a bit of form. You know, you see it throughout the football leagues, don't you? That the teams that make that late charge into the playoffs tend to do well getting right the way up to the final or maybe yeah. beyond. So Halifax have got to look at that and go, actually, I really like the idea of of you know we could beat anybody. But 
it, it, we've still got so many, we've got seven, eight games to play, Luke. It's, it could just turn, turn on its head again. So, yeah, well, I, I just want to get, get your takes on Alifax. Of course, I'm going to give my opinion, but of course, you look at their form at the moment. They've only had, you know, one defeat. I think is it in nine games. Well, I think in the last, um, I think is it eight games have had one defeat, and these, these seven games have actually won. Um, so you know they're top of the league in the form table at mm. the moment. Um, for you, you look at Halifax. Would you be backing them to finish inside the playoffs at the moment? Of course, they they have got some tricky games coming up. Although it is one of the easier runs, we've still got. Oldham at home, Barnet at home, Hartley pull away, which will be a tough place. And then a few yeah. sides are playing for something towards the bottom and Kidderminster and York. Um, would you be backing Halifax to get in the playoffs? And what do you see in them overall in the last couple of weeks? Yes, I, I would. I mean, when we did our predictions some weeks ago, I had Halifax in the top top set, top seven. Um, yeah. I can't see that changing. Like you said, Luke, you know, what one one loss in eight games and beating Chesterfield at home is going to be a massive flip for them. You'd like to think that maybe a few more fans will come back so the Shea gets a bit fuller and it becomes a bit more hostile. And like you said, the pitch isn't brilliant. So that plays to their advantage maybe a little bit. Yeah. Listen, the Halifax are that team that are, are the ones that are pushing through. You know, Altrincham have faltered recently. Gateshead, not so much. Oldham are they were our own worst enemy. You know, Barney Bromley and Solihull have been there or thereabouts the whole season. All the shot have slowly you know, moved up and got themselves into that position. Whereas it's it's Halifax. I know they've been in and around it, but they're the ones that have pushed into it in the last couple of weeks. And you know, with a month to go in the in the in the league, they're gonna really gonna look at it and think we're the team in form. Let you know, let's go and, and hold out. You know, what is it? It's only two points and they could drop out of it. So it's just so tight, isn't it? But I think I think Halifax, are, because they're that team in form, they're going to really try and sort of stay in that fifth, sixth, seventh position. Yeah, for me, when I look at Halifax at the moment, I see a side that's hitting form at the right time. You know, we've got six games left to play for... No, seven games, sorry, of Halifax have got left to play. You look at how we're playing at the moment, I think most people will be backing us to get inside the playoffs. And for a side to be going in with form in the playoffs, it's probably better than the side that's finished fourth, potentially, who's yeah. been, you know, just consistent throughout the season. You know, I actually probably, if we got into the playoffs this season, I would be less nervous and probably more confident and optimistic than the season when we finished fourth and probably should have finished third or second because it was so... I think damaging, not finishing in the top three. It kind of drained the energy out of the playoffs to have to play that extra game against Chesterfield. And we ran out of steam in that playoff match and we lost to them. Where this season we're coming in with form. Sides don't particularly know what to expect from us. We're a bit of an unknown quantity coming into the playoffs because we haven't consistently been in throughout the season. So for me, I think Halifax, ever side that in the playoffs, I would be fairly confident as much as I can be being a support of Halifax that we'd we actually do quite well in the playoffs. Um, I want to ask the, the people who are watching, uh, who, who is it that you think in the playoffs could be a bit of a dark horse this season? Um, because for me, I, I think, you know, you could put you in the top nine at the moment. You could have a strong argument or any of them getting promoted um, through the playoffs. Um, just looking a bit further down from Halifax, then you've got Ultronham, Gateshead and Oldham. Ultronham, of course, make up that final playoff spot. Um do you think they're going to fall out? Uh, do you think Gold will get back in? How do you see that going? I know it's a question. It's kind of a, a repetitive question, isn't it, now? Because mm. keep asking you it. But yeah. Just I mean, the good thing about Halifax, Luke, is at the last eight games, they've only lost one, which was to Bromley. So, you know, that's, that's fair enough. Um, Bromley beat most teams. Halifax have only let 44 goals in in the whole season. Mm. Yeah. Chessfield let fifty five in, and they're top of the league. So you know, going into the, going into the the playoffs, if you've got a miserly defence, they they often say the championships are built on defences. You know, so you, they've got to look at that and go, well, if we can get our scoring boots on, which they clearly have in the last eight games, because they've scored more than one goal in all but one of those games, which they did win one nil. So you know, if you're going to defend well enough, where you're only going to let one goal in maximum. And you're able to score more than one, you're going to win games. It's as simple as that, and that's what Halifax are doing well. 
the, the challenge you got with the likes of Aldershot, Altrincham, Gateshead and Oldham, I would suggest is that they can score goals, but they can let goals in. And, you know, when it comes to, to play off football or knock out football, it's a really tough thing to try and then sort of put into your mind that, well, if they score two, we're going to score three. Because the mentality in knockout football or cup football that naturally changes. It's a different way of playing to the way that you play in the league. It's an all or nothing. So you can go one way or the other. You can go, sod it. Let's just go and try and win this game, which may may be the case for some. But most teams, I would suggest, are then quite reserved in what they try and pr- try and do to approach the game to win or lose, uh, to not lose rather. Now, if Halifax have already got that mindset right the way from, so from, from match day one, which they clearly have, because that we've often said that they're good at defending. But it's yeah. not always the top end that they're they're too potent in. They're going to start scoring goals and they're still miserly in defence. They're going to be suited better, I believe, in playoff football to the likes of Aldershot, Altrincham, Oldham. That's notwithstanding that those teams are have got quality and on their day with the likes of Con Clark and the likes of um, Will Grigg or, um, you know, whoever it is that might be up top, up top and in the creative positions, that they could produce something. But, if you're well established and you're well drilled and you're well organised and you don't let many goals in, you've got a great chance of progressing. Yeah, I, well, I totally agree with that. You know, it's not always about the prettiest football, is it? Particularly in important, crucial matches like playoff games, it's about getting over the line. And it's something that I think in this group of Halifax players is they're a team of warriors and fighters, in my opinion, from what I've seen. We're not the most attractive team to watch, you know, if it was a choice of watching Aldershot or Halifax at the moment, you'd probably pick Aldershot over Halifax to watch if you was a neutral to watch a better game. But for me, the way we're playing at the moment is we're very hard to break down. We're probably the most organised side in the division, apart from Bromley, I would say. Um, so for me, I think Halifax is certainly a side that people should be keeping a close eye on it in these playoff spot in the playoffs um, if we manage to maintain this playoff spot at the moment because it is in our hands now you know going into that Chesterfield game most people would have probably backed Chesterfield to win so to win that and get such a big game like that out of the way you look at the running now for Halifax on paper you'd probably would be backing them because of those games and you know you look at Ultranham they've probably got a fairly relatively um Winnable run, I'd say. Um, so you might back them to get in after Gate said they've only got all them who are in the top half, and the rest of the sides are all currently in the bottom half. Um, and a few of those, I think, by the time they're playing and won't have much to play for. For me, you look at Gate said they've probably got the toughest run out of the lot, and they've got more games to play as well with the FA Trophy. So for me, with Gate said, I personally feel they're going to be that side that falls short. Um, you know, they've still got Bromley to play, they've got Aldershot, Chesterfield, they've still got to play, Ultranham. You've got sides like Hartlepool as well, who are on their day, clearly have the quality to hurt sides too. Um, so for me, I think Gates said they're the side that I think is going to fall short um, and not get inside the playoffs. And then I personally think it'll be between Oldham, Ultranham and Halifax to make sixth and seventh. I'd like to think we'll get in. But if we, let's say, lose to Ebsley on Saturday, my opinion will just change like that. And I think everyone will, you know, it can just change like that. Um, anyway, we're 15 minutes in and we haven't even seen what you guys are saying. So I do apologise for that. Um, John's in tonight and said, evening all. And then Steve, uh, Paul. Yeah, 50 cc Steve. Then. Evening all, playoff and relegation puzzle continues to look intriguing. Halifax coming with a storming run for Luke. Yeah, just, we just highlighted that we? So they're, they're in the right form at the right time. But this is I, it's all we've been speaking about the last few weeks is relegation playoffs because one week after, one game week after, you know, Tuesdays and, and Saturdays, it, cha- it seems to change almost every week. So, you know, it, it's still difficult to predict anything at the moment. I think for me, you look at sides at the moment, there's probably only about four or five sides and I think a lot of them have come in the last week where they probably don't have much to play for now. I think you'd probably say Hartlepool, Dagenham, Southend and Rochdale probably can't get in the playoffs now but 
can get relegated. Woking, they put a good run together and have, I think, proven a lot of us wrong, considering the mess they were in a few weeks ago. They've done very well to be in 14th at the moment and you'd like to think they'll be fine. Ebb's fleet with the form there on there, another side. The table's just changed, hasn't it? So mm. quick, you know, Ebb's fleet working were both in the drop zone a few weeks ago. Even Wheelstone have been and filed. It's it sounds like Eastley and Bowen Wood and probably Maidenhead as well, who were who were dropping out of form at the wrong time, particularly when you feel like the size of Kidderminster have still got a bit of a run in them because you know, you, you look at Kidderminster, the form they've been on this second half of the season is probably top half form, yet they still find themselves in the drop zone. And that's how tough this league really is. Um, Dorking, you know, they're another side that are looking like they are probably going to go down as well. Um, you know, they've got some tough games to play. Bromley, Aldershot they've got, uh, Barnet as well coming up and Ultranham as well. Um, do you think they're a side for you, Paul, that you think are down or would you like to think that they'll be able to find some fight in the last couple of games to cl- climb away? Well, I see. I always I always thought that they'd 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 do enough. You know, they've got got an unorthodox manager in Mark White, but one thing we do know he's a winner and you know he's fifteen promotions in twenty two years or something ridiculous like that that he's had with with uh, Dorkin. They've never been relegated. He's not gonna want that record to be tarnished this year. He's gonna want to stay in the National League. They've invested heavily in their ground and, and their squad. Um but they are starting to look like they're struggling. And, and this weekend's not going to be any easier for them. You know, if you look at that bottom four, the teams that they're playing, there's some real sort of top V bottom fixtures in this match day um, set of fixtures. And, you know, they've got to go to Barnet and try and get something. And that's not easy for any team. You know, Barnet's probably a little bit friendlier because there's, they don't get big, really big crowds for the fact they're second in the table. But, they do play front foot attacking football and Dorking do the same. And and, and I think Barnett are better at doing it than maybe Dorking are. So that you know it's a tough one. I, I would I wouldn't want to see them go. You know, that they're entertaining. Mark White adds entertainment on the sidelines and, and he's good for the in for the National League, but um it's certainly looking difficult for him at the moment. I never like to and I, I do and I know a lot of people will take this with a pinch of salt, but I I genuinely don't ever like to see sides go down from the National League because, of course, it me- it means we'll lose a bit of the community. Of course, other people will come along. But, you know, particularly York, Kidderminster and Dorking, you know, Dorking, I've got a soft spot for because of Mark White and the journey they've been on and I think the whole philosophy around the club so friendly and what football should be about. So I have a massive soft spot for them. So I, I really hope they can survive. Kidderminster, former football league side, I'd love to see them be able to survive as well because it is a quite a good away day as well. And then York, you know, they're a massive club. It's been an awful season considering that they've had this takeover. It's just not gone right there. Um, so I'd love to see them be able to get out of it as well. Um, Paul's come in and he said, Chesterfield, you lucky sods. It should have been eight last night. Millington manager of the week. Things are looking good down at the Shea at the moment and looking forward to the running now. Yeah, it certainly is. And I will say this, Paul. Um, I know you mentioned there about us not scoring many goals, but we're starting to now. We, we certainly yeah. are. and We're creating more chances. So for me, it, it is kind of, when I'm saying it's not, in exciting to watch. I personally feel in the last couple of weeks, it is actually starting to become enjoy quite an enjoyable experience going to the show rather than it being a chore, uh, like it has been probably in the first half of the season to a certain extent. Um, George has come in, Paul. Evening, everyone. National League never seems to disappoint. Loving the run Woking's on at the minute. Six games left, looking to enjoy the ride to mid-table. Now, I think what you just sort of said in the last few minutes, Luke, and what George is alluding to there is just how quickly football can change. I don't I don't believe it was many weeks ago that George said that they were doomed and they were going down and they were this and that and the other. You know, and you and you've sort of the discontent of the Shea and Millington being booed and who owns the ground and what's gonna happen in the future. And you know, roll on a few weeks, you're looking at playoffs and getting into the EFL, and George is looking at Woking getting into mid table. It's just, it's an absolutely, it's a bonkers league. 
you know, it's just it, it, it's a roller coaster. And, and you, like you said, we don't want to lose teams, but teams that come in add to it, teams that drop out of it or come back, you know, hopefully in the next few years and we'll still see, see the familiar faces. But yeah, it, it's a brilliant league. It, it's so, so good. And, and I love talk about it like you do and you, all these fans that come on online and, and watch their teams every week, they must be feeling exactly the same. It's it's great for the neutral, not great so much for those fans that are in, in amongst it. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, and then Sting Tone has come in and said, you must have been dying to these podcasts after last yeah. night. Yeah, I certainly was. I am in a very good mood. Um, ask all my mates at uh, college about that because um, I've certainly been celebrating today. And then um, Lee's come and said, evening all. And then uh, Caroline's come and said, shots fan, Luke, your team played well last night. You are very close to us now. Yeah, we certainly are. Um, all the shot there aside, they're also on fairly decent form and have picked up some very big wins in the last couple of weeks. For me, I'm, I'm backing them to get in the playoffs because of that home form. You know, you look at some of the sides that they've beaten, Barnet, Oldham, um, Altrinham as well, that they've been in the last couple of weeks at home. You'd like to think Aldershot will be able to do enough with the home games remaining to be able to confirm a playoff spot. For me, though, I think it's crucial that they get fourth or fifth in the playoffs so they can have that home tie at least for the quarterfinal um, playoff game. Um, I think they need to have that home tie, in my opinion. Um, and then David's coming, Paul. Hi, David. I just don't see Dorking going down. Mark White is a different type of character. I think it will be squeaky bum time for Dorking and its fans, but I think they will just survive. I can't. I can't disagree with that, David. I just find it, it, it's looking more difficult for them. But if there's anyone who's up for a fight and uh, wants to get out of it, then it's certainly Mark White. Mark White and his Mark White and his Dorking team. Yeah, it's, it certainly is. You know. The thing is, it, with Dawkins' situation, I think is what's difficult for them is every other side picking up. So when they get a big win, everyone else wins. We saw it when they beat Chesterfield. I think after that game, most people had have their money on being able to pull away, but they just can't get any momentum or consistency to be able to put three or four wins together like we've seen Ebb's fleet do. If they can do that in the final few games, and they'll easily pull away because it's so tight. But for me, I look at those games, Barnet away, Bromley, Aldershot away, Altrinham, even going to like Wheelstone away, which is a tough place to go. I can't see where they'll be able to put a good run together in these final few games um, for them to be able to climb away from the drop zone. So for me, if I was to predict the bottom four at the moment, I probably would have to back them to go down. Um, but I do hope that they would come back up instantly. Um, and then we've had, um, coming tonight, we've had uh, Mason's coming to an evening. Fair play to Halifax last night. Thank you very much, Mason, um, for your kind words. And then uh, Big Bad Bob's come in and said, uh, reckon uh, Oldham make playoffs but get knocked out at the, the first hurdle. What's your thoughts on that then, Paul? Because they're a side that were outside of the playoffs, um, had quite a difficult start of the season, then went on a brilliant run of form where they were averaging two points a game for probably a third of the season, got into the playoffs. And I think we both thought that we wouldn't see them drop out again now. Yet they've dropped out, they're winless in four, and they're ninth. Um, what's your thoughts on Oldham then, Paul? Yeah, I mean... They've only won one game in the last, looking at here, one, two, three, four, last seven. And that was against 10 men Eastley, who aren't on the greatest run of four themselves. The, the, the problem with, with Oldham is just their their lack of ability to get something from home games. If you look at it here, they drew, OK, it's Chesterfield. They drew two, they were two nil up, I think, against Chesterfield at home. They ended up drawing two all. They've drawn nil nil with Bromley, which is, you would respect that point. They haven't got anything out of South End. They haven't got anything out of Kidderminster. And they, you know, and the last time they won was against Boreham Wood back in the middle of February at home. So I think that they're right, like I said, they're their own worst enemy. They've 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 tried to build a fan base back up at Boundary Park. They had the biggest crowd ever for a long time the other week. They've clearly got a good manager and a good squad with depth of quality. And on the day, they they've they've got the ability to to, to be as good as anyone in this league. And I wouldn't be surprised if they don't get promoted that they'll be one of the favourites for next year. Um, Mickey Mellon will get his sort of house in order pre-season, get his own players in and, and, and what have you. But 
they're a real conundrum because they're not very good at home and they haven't been and and that's going to play on their minds in the playoffs but at the same time they got some experience and characters in their squad that I think may have been there or thereabouts in playoffs and 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 cup football and they may know what it takes to get through so the, the first challenge they've got Luke is they've got they've got to get in to the playoff positions and they're the reverse mm. of Halifax they're doing right at the wrong time they're they're, go, they're going this way whereas you boys are going up so you know they've got a rest of slide they've got Dagenham filed an alti three four winnable games that you'd like to think they could get points out of and and from there who knows I think for them like you said, with it being opposite to Halifax, if they could somehow pick up some form, which is very doable, like you've mentioned, there's a lot of winnable games coming up um, for them. They've probably got the easiest running out of all the sides that are in and in and just outside of the playoffs at the moment. If they could mm. finish sixth or seventh for them, it'd probably benefit them because they're away from home and they'd be that kind of Grimsby type of side of a few years ago where they might be able to sneak through with that mentality that they've got, you know, a bigger way following going to all these places. But for me at the moment, um, they certainly need to start winning games and put a run together in, in the final few games. Otherwise, they won't even get that opportunity to get promoted in the playoffs um, come the end of the season. Ollie said, I think Halifax will fall short um, and Alti and Oldham will make the playoffs. So, I think it's Gates said we'll not get in either. Um, and then Tom's come in and said, um, who do you think will make playoffs and who misses out? I think Solly will miss out. And oh, I've noticed something about you, Tom. To say you're a Solly fan, you're very, very negative <laughs> uh, about your team. Considering how you guys are playing, we haven't even need to speak much about you at the moment because you're just going along quietly, doing your business and, and getting the jobs done. Um, no, they'll they'll be inside the playoffs. Um for me, I'm going to say Gates and are going to miss out. And I'm going to say Altrum. I think Oldham and Halifax will be able to get in. Um, I might be being a bit biased there. Paul, I'm, I know I'm putting you on the spot. I do apologise for that. But who would you say misses out? I think, I think you're right. I think the top seven as they are, I think will stay the same. The only thing that might change it is the fact that when you look at this, Gateshead have got a game in hand. And if they can win that game in hand, I don't, I don't know who it's against. Um, but if they can win that game in hand, then that that will help them immensely because it is so tight in that sort in that section. Um, you know, if they win the game in hand as it stands today, you know, they would they would drop into sixth place, potentially fifth, looking at goal difference. I've got working out their goal difference is probably yeah. slightly better as well. So you know, I think that's the massive one for Gates said that's something they've got to hang on to. They've got that game in hand, but it's easier said than done. Points on boards are poured, as we always say, is probably better. So I think you're right. Maybe Gateshead and Oldham are going to be those that just, just don't quite make it. Oh, so, so you're back in it. You think, all oh, right, fair enough. Then, so you'll agree with me on that. Um, yeah. And then we've got, I'm saying, didn't, I think I said Oldham will get in um, and then Alton are going to slip out, in my opinion. Right. Just got a feeling with Oldham, with that running, it would be. I'd be shocked with, with those games and it'd be a massive disappointment if they didn't manage to finish inside the playoffs come the end of the season with, with those remaining games for me. Um, and then we've had Ryan's come in and said, uh, Scumthorpe are massive. We hope to see <laughs> return next season. Um, I have missed Scumthorpe. Um, you know, it'd be good to see a, a big side with, with a large following be able to come into the league because... They certainly are a side that would add something to the National League, in, in my opinion. Um, and then Big Bad Bob's come in and said, Barnet, Bromley, Aldershot, Solly and Halifax and Oldham to make the playoffs. So he's thinking Gates and an Ultra and will finish just outside. And then our mate from Australia said, good day from down under. Ray's coming, Paul. I uh, think after last night, Halifax will go up. Hopefully it's party time at Chesterfield this Saturday. So, yeah, Chesterfield fan back in you there, Luke. Being kind yeah, after you dropped them four two, yeah, I think Chesterfield are going to finally lift the trophy at the weekend at home. At um, is it Salt? Is it called Saltergate still? But uh, yeah, I think they're going to uh, they're going to win the trophy on Saturday. So party time for them, and then we can concentrate who finishes in the the playoff positions. 
Tom's come in and said, which teams uh, from the National League North and National League South would you like to see in the National League next season? Uh, it's another one. You keep putting us on the spot, Tom. I don't mind. But if I can remember rightly, it looks like Tamworth and Yeovil will definitely be coming up because they're winning their leagues. Um, Yeovil, of course, they're a big club. It's good to see that they'll be back in this division. They should never have been in the National League South. Tamworth, they're new. I can't remember them last being mm. in the National League. I don't think I was watching football at the time when they were last in the National League. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. I think they'll be hoping to not make the same mistakes as we've seen other sides that maybe haven't had much experience in the division in the last couple of seasons, like um, Oxford and, and Haventon and Waterloo and, and your Weymouths. They'll be hoping to be able to survive that first season. Um who else is this? Scunthorpe, I think they're second and you'd like to think that they can come up in the in the National League, National League North. The South, that might be where I asked Paul. Um, who, who would you like to see come up with your level then, Paul? Well, it, you know when we talk about being on form, Braintree currently are sitting in um, third place just behind Chelmsford. They've got a game in hand on Chelmsford, which would take them within the two points of them. But when you look at their form... And this came, someone pointed out to me, you know, in the, um, at the weekend. And typically they haven't lost since the 1st of January, which was against Chelmsford. So in the last one, two, three, 15 games, they haven't lost. So Braintree are the team in form. So you'd like to think if they carry on doing that, within the playoffs, then it'd probably be Braintree that we see, who I believe have been in the National League, uh, you know, in, yeah. in the recent the past. Um, Chelmsford, I've seen them play a couple of times over the last few years. Willstone have played against them in cup matches. Very good side. Robbie Simpson's doing a great job down there. You know, they don't get a massive fan base. It's it's a Gateshead-style stadium, so it's not the best in terms of a, of a National League experience, uh, but they certainly use it to their advantage, and they're very, very good very nice people down there and, you know, very welcoming club. So I think it it was going to be between maybe Braintree and Chelmsford um, looking at the other teams. Worthing have slipped slightly. Maystone have had their eye off the ball with the cup. They might sort of start pushing on again and staying in the playoffs. St. Albans are a good team. They lost their manager to us at Wildstone and they've managed to carry on and they've, they've um, kept the, the chap that was in charge sort of in the interim basis until the end of the season and going into next year. So they've got a bit of stability. So, uh, yeah, I think I think Braintree are probably the favourites, just looking at their form. If not, it would be Chelmsford. Where is Bra I never went. I, I remember Braintree being in our league and seeing them come to the share, but where where are they based, Braintree? Brain, Braintree is in Essex. Oh, so the not same, not very far from the likes of Dagenham, that sort of area. So, yeah, yeah, it's just it's just sort of on the outside of the borders of London, geographically, sort of roughly speaking. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, yeah, it's, it's an easy, it's an easy enough place to get to, to be honest. Um, and you know, they've got Yeovil, a little ground. Yeovil's the one that I'm guessing probably they're well supported and they're a big club, but it's awful to get to, from what I've heard. But yeah, I mean, Yeovil, Yeovil's. What they're getting three or four thousand watching them, and if they're back in the national league and Mark Cooper starts off well with them, you know, and, and he invests in his team. I saw them play Saturday against Slough and they got a nil nil draw. You know, that they're, they're limping a little bit to the title. I think if Chelsea can still technically catch them, um, they're going to have to make reinforcements for next year without a doubt. You know, there's they've, they've got some very good players, um. But I think they will struggle in the National League if they don't invest in their, in their squad and what they've got and build on it. They're certainly going to need some forwards. You know, Reese Murphy and, and Jake Hyde, who've got real National League pedigree, are just injury prone and probably can't hold up for a 40, 50, 40 to 45 game season in the National League. So, you know, they're going to have a big rebuilding um, time in the summer to try and do their best in the National League. But they're probably the most well-equipped team in that league, clearly, because they're winning it quite handsomely at the moment. But you just got to look at their infrastructure and, and their stadium compared to the likes of Braintree, Chelmsford, Hampton, Richmond Borough, 
Worthings and all, you know, they're all very, very sort of small clubs, you know, no disrespect to them in terms of what National League would offer. So, um, yeah, I think Yeovil, they will maybe struggle next year because of what they've got currently, but it'd be interesting to see what they do in the summer. Um, Braintree could be a bit of an Ebbsfleet stroke Oxford City. You, you don't know what you're going to get from them. Yeah, we'll move on to the next question then. Thank you, Tom, for your question. Um, Bradley's come and said the relegation zone and uh, area just above is so tight. A lot of very nervous sets of fans, including me. Yeah, easily they're a side that we would have never have thought would get dragged into it, but they've been dragged into the thick of it as well. And like we've said, it's your size like your Eastleys, your Maidenhead, your Bourne Woods, who will certainly be very anxious at the moment, looking older than, over their shoulders, especially when they're not in the best of form. Um, and then I think someone else has come in and said... After the Rochdale game, Eastleigh are in real danger. Um, and then we've had Chris who's come in and said, uh, i like to see Chester seen in the National League next season. Yeah, Chester, I wouldn't mind that. Um, you know, they're quite a big club as well. I think it'd bring a lot to the division, another former football league side. You know, we talk about the National League being full of, you know, big support groups who, who shouldn't be in this, well, support bases who shouldn't be in this division. Um you look at the North and South and they have some massive clubs in there, particularly the North, Hereford, Chester, Scunthorpe, Scarborough, all, all in there. I've probably missed a dozen as well. Um, Paul's going to say, evening all. Uh, hope you are all well. Um, this is coming from Mason. What was your thoughts on Alex Woodyard being made for transfer by York? Now, of course, he signed from Wimbledon in the summer and were quite a big statement signing. For York, yeah, it's not really gone to plan for him there, like it hasn't a lot of players, including the likes of, of Corden and Howe. Um, what's your opinion on that, uh, when, when you see things like that happening at York at the moment, Paul? Yeah, it's a, it's a difficult one, isn't it? I mean, has he been put on the transfer list because he wants to leave, or has he been put on the transfer list because the new manager's come in and he doesn't fit his sort of style and philosophy and, and they they've come to an agreement that actually if it, you know if he's made available for transfer he may find that he'll find a club somewhere else he may he may just be struggling to settle you know he's come from Wimbledon he's gone up to York it could just be a personal thing and, and and nothing really to do with football but it's really it's really hard isn't it because if you you know at, at National League I know they're all professional essentially in full time but yeah, that's a lot of upheaval. And if it's not going well, you sometimes then start to question your own sort of uh, motives for moving or, or the reasons why you moved, etc. You know, I, I've never been in that position, Luke, so I don't I don't know for sure. But, um, you know, it may it smacks you that it's probably be it's probably a mutual thing. You know, I want to go. OK, we don't really need you. He's probably on a whacking load of cash. And, you know, if he's not playing regularly or he, he feels like he's not going to play much next year, then let's just get him off the books, move him on, let him find another club, and then everyone's happy. Yeah, it's, a, it's interesting. Do you know what I think when, when I look at York in a way? I look at them at the start of the season thinking about it now, and Ugler's gone, in my opinion, and tried to sign loads of big names. And who can we get? Who can we get to impress the fans and get them on side? And he hasn't actually thought about how it'll look when the team shapes up. If you've noticed, they've signed quite a lot of centre-halves and midfielders, Cordner, Howe, Woodyard, Batty. They're all statement signings, yes. But you think about some of their experience in the National League in recent years. It doesn't look good on paper. And for me, I just don't think the recruitment's been well at all, particularly when you think of the budget that they've had. You know, you think of a side like Halifax who've got nowhere near the budget York have and how smart they've been with the recruitment. And you look at a side like York and you just think it's a massive waste with with the money that they've been able to spend um, this season. Um, and then we've had uh, Mason's come and said, Gates said, have Hartlepool, Aldershot and Chesterfield as their games in hand. They're not the sort of games that you want in hand, I, I would say, um, if you were a Chesterfield fan. Um, someone said, would like to see Chester come up um, through the National League uh, North. And then we've had uh, Christopher Stay, Stay, Story. Sorry. Who who do you both think will win the FA Trophy? Hopefully, that he can have last year's um, 
defeat. Who's still in there? You've got Gateshead, Solial, Macclesfield, and, and is it Bromley. Barnett? Bromley. 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 Yeah. I think I'd be backing probably Bromley to win it again, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, Wilson played Solihull in the quarterfinal and they they were unlucky not to win on penalties. I think, you know, fair play to Solihull. They took the chance. They won the penalties and uh, threw on penalties, but they weren't the most impressive side that we've seen down at the Vale. Um, you know, whereas Bromley have beaten Wildstone 1-0 with 10 men, you know, midweek. So, I don't know. I think you're right, Luke. Bromley are just, just that juggernaut of a team, aren't they, in the National League? And uh, I think they'll finish second, get promoted and win the FA Trophy. Yeah, it, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Macclesfield, you know, they're an interesting one and the side that I'd expect in the upcoming years for us to be covering on this podcast mm. on, on a regular basis uh, with what they're trying to do there. Um, they're a side, it'd be such a great story if, if they can get to Wembley at least. Um, I think have they got, um, they've got Mackle at uh, Gate, said, haven't they, away, mm. which will be a tough game, I think, for them, but certainly a game you'd like to think that's going to be winnable. Um, Tom's coming with a five pound donation, so thank you very much, Tom. For that, it is much appreciated. He said, Barnett, Bromley, Solihull, Aldershot, Gates and Halifax for playoffs, in my opinion. And hopefully the outcome will be the shots winning it all. Tom, thank you very much for your donation. Um, it's much appreciated and the money will be going back into um, making the podcast better. Um, we've had um, Paul, who's coming and said, it's amazing working Bournemouth in playoffs last season and both could be relegated this year. Yeah, it's just how tight this league can be. We've seen it happen before. Fylde, they went down the season after. Braintree and Ebsfleet, I think both had fairly respectable seasons in the season prior to them going down on the first time. Um, right then, I think we'll... We've come to a point where we're probably ready to do our predictions. Um, these are the scores on the doors. Paul, you've defeated me for once. Um, you picked up, I think, six points and I picked up four points. Thoughts on that? Oh, it's clawing it back right at the end of the season. So, yeah, it's down to less than 10 points. So, um, another couple of good weeks and it could be a bit of a squeaky bum time for either of us going into that last month of the season. Yeah, it certainly is. You're kind of doing a bit of a, maybe a bit of an Ebbs fleet and trying to get a good run starting to go up. Or maybe <laughs> Halifax even and hoping to catch me. Um, I'd like to think I'll be able to keep this lead, but you never know. We've still got six games weeks to play for. This is how the table looks at the moment. Chesterfield, of course, defeated in midweek, but do have that opportunity to, to gain promotion back to the Football League. Um, if they can defeat Bournemouth on home turf. I think a large proportion of their fans uh, might see Tuesday, Wednesday sorry, as a blessing in disguise so they can actually win it on home turf. Barnet and Bromley in second and third. Solihull, Aldershot, Halifax and Ultram make up the playoffs. Halifax have managed to climb up themselves back into the playoffs probably after a couple of months outside, you would say. Gates and an Oldham have fallen out. Then you've got your Rochdale, your South End, your Dagnams and Hartley Pulse, who you'd probably think have done enough to, to be able to survive, but probably don't have enough to be able to get into the playoffs. Then you'd probably say from working downwards, any of those could go down. Would, would you agree with Paul or, or do you think working? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. I mean, the fact Hartley Pool have got a couple of games in hand can push them up, whereas, you know, whereas Woking, Woking down. Yeah, it's mate. Apart from Wildstone, who could who could be in a false position because of the games they've still got to play, it's unlikely. I think they'll finish there or thereabouts. But apart from that, you know, these teams are now scrambling for points every week. Yeah, they, they certainly are. I think, like you said, with Wildstone, it, it does feel like they've been a bit hard done to this season, and maybe the, the season would be a total different story if, if they could get those games on. You know, I think they're in a false position. And I think for you guys, I think you're going to be fine with some of those games. I think you've got filed, haven't you, on Saturday? You win that. Uh, yeah, you Kidderminster win. on Saturday. Kidderminster, sorry. Yeah, yeah. You win that, you go up to 49 points. Um, when I've worked it out at the moment, 
you need about 50 points to survive. Mm -hmm. Of course, that could change. But after that, you know, you've got the likes of Oxford to play as well. So you'd like to think Wheelstone will, will be fine um, this season. Anyway, we'll move on to the predictions. Game week 41, we are on. Five more game weeks after this one. Fylde versus Oxford then. Um, what are you thinking, Paul? Get your predictions in, guys. Uh, I've got Fylde 2, Oxford 0. Um, Oxford are doomed. I mean, I don't know when it could be mathematically possible for them not to get relegated. I think just the other teams losing around them has caused them to stay in the hunt that little bit to sort of not get go down just yet. But, uh, you know, filed. Wilson got a good, impressive win against them last weekend away at, away at their place. And, you know, it was, that was a hard-fought performance, two very good goals. Um, I'm not sure Oxford are going to be quite as potent as, as Wilson were last week. And I think Fylde will come out of that and winning 2-0. I've actually gone, I think this was the one I went for a bit of a freak uh, result, if I can remember. Did I go? I think I actually did. For this game, I went for a three-all draw. Both <laughs> sides, um, yeah, it's a bit random. Um, I always have one every week. Both sides um, are known to concede an awful amount of goals. Um, but considering their positions, they've both scored a fair amount as well. Oxford have the worst defence in the league and I think Fylde have the second worst defence as well. So it's a game for me that screams goals. Um, Oxford had no wins in 10. The due up to get a result at some point and I think this will be quite an entertaining game um, in my opinion. We'll move on to the next game then now. Um, Aldershot versus Solon. Now this is a massive game um, for the playoffs. Um I've gone for a one-all draw for this game. Um, you know, Aldershot at home are probably are probably one of the best sides at home. Well, they are this season. Um, it's their home form, in my opinion. Well, it is their home form. Why they are inside the playoffs and in such a good position. You know, the likes of Altrinham, uh, Oldham, Barnet. They even nearly managed to defeat Chesterfield as well. Halifax at home as well. They're very strong at home, at Aldershot. Um, Solly will come into this on great form, though. So I'm going to go for a one-all draw. How do you see it going, Paul? This is my high-scoring game of the week, and I've gone with shots three, Solly hole two. Both fairly decent going forward, aren't they? And like I said, Aldershot at home are very good. Um, Solly hole. Are effective and they've they've you know they've sat in that playoff pool for for a number of weeks, but um, a, a good game on paper. You know both teams are going to want to try and, and get that home position where they can in the playoffs, and uh, I just think shots are going to prevail this week and, and win three two. Next game then that we will have a look at another big game in in terms of the playoffs. Um, Ultram versus Gate said. Um, for Gate said it's one of their games in hand. For Ultranum, they'll be wanting to be able to stay inside the playoffs come 5 pm on Saturday. For me, I'm actually going to back Ultranum to win this game 2 1. How do you see it going, Paul? Uh, I've gone with a two all draw, both capable of scoring goals. Very good, attractive, an excellent game on paper in terms of the teams that are playing. And, and you know, I think if Aside from the six pointers that might be of an interest to fans, you know, if I was to say go and watch a game of National League football this weekend, Alty Gateshead would probably be the one in terms of that the way that they play. Um, two, I've gone with a two all draw. They both don't want to lose, do they? Because if they lose, you know, they, they're going to just stop start losing ground on that seventh, sixth, seventh, eighth place, and that's going to be crucial. So they, they're not going to want to lose, but they're both capable of winning this game. So I've gone with a two-all draw just because it's, it's going to be cagey. Next game that we'll have a look at, Barnet versus Dorkin. This should be another entertaining game, I would say. Um, Dorkin are known to be able to get results against the better teams and, to be fair, score an awful amount of goals themselves. Um, Barnet, of course, are known for scoring a lot of goals themselves and have both been in a few crazy score lines this season. Um for me, I'm going to go for a 3-2 Barnet win. I think it'll be a high-scoring game, but I will. I am going to back Barnet to win this game. How do you see it going, Paul? You, you're probably right. It could be a high-scoring game, aren't they? Both teams do like to play on the front foot and, and, and can leave themselves exposed to the back. I've gone with a Barnet win. I think the league doesn't lie, does it? And and there's a reason why Barnet are in the top four and Bromley, uh, Dorking are in the bottom four. So... 
you know, I, I can't see Dorkin winning. I think Barnett will win comfortably. I've gone with 2-1. It could be more, but I've gone with 2-1. Next game that we'll have a look at, I'll catch up on those score predictions once I've done this, but Bromley versus York. For me, I think this is a tough game. Bromley have shown in recent weeks, although they are on good form, that they are known to, to be able to drop points at home. Um, you know, a nil-nil draw to Kidderminster. They're not actually scoring a lot. Um, and and they're not they're not battering teams either. They're just getting over the line. Um, for me, I'm going to go for a one-all draw for this game. Um, you know, York come into this after a big win versus Aldershot, and I think if they're wanting to survive, they desperately need to start picking up results. And it's going to be difficult in the next couple of weeks because um, this is one of, of the difficult games coming up for them. But I'm going to go for a one-all draw. Um, how do you see it going, Paul? I've gone with Bromley 3 York nil. Um the only fly in the ointment might be who Bromley play in goal. You know, I don't know what their goalkeeping um strength is like, having lost Grant Smith last night against Wildstone for a, a straight red card. So he's gonna miss a, a couple of games at least. So that could be the only fly in the ointment. But I think York York, I know they picked up a half decent result of the weekend, but they they are just all over the show at the moment, aren't they? And uh, and Bromley certainly aren't. So I've just gone with a Bromley 3, York nil. I think it's just going to be very convincing down at their place. Yes, certainly. We'll move on to the next game. Now, most people are backing Bromley. One person has, of course, backed York. I don't know if that's a York fan or not, but I think everyone else is backing um, Bromley. Apart from Leaves, also said a one-all draw for that game. Everyone's going in with their predictions tonight. Um, thank you very much for doing that, guys. Um, we'll move on to the next game. Just an idea for next season as well. It's probably a bit late now to start this up, but we should start a, a predictions league for the viewers as well um, and maybe give them an opportunity to fill in a slide where they give their predictions each week and, and we'll put it on screen for you guys too. But anyway, this is a big game um, for Chesterfield and for Bowen Wood as well. Of course, you know, they've got a difficult end to the season and they are looking over their shoulders at the moment. They're out of form at the wrong time and this is not the place they'll be wanting to go to get back to winning ways. Chesterfield away where Chesterfield have the opportunity to win the league in front of a sold-out crowd, which I'd expect it to be. I'm going to go for a 2-0 Chesterfield win. How do you see it going, Paul? Uh, I've gone for 4-1. Um, there could be a chance that Shimanga comes back and spoils the promotion party, but I, I personally can't see it. I think Chesterfield, you know, whether they, you know, took their eye off the ball last night or not against Halifax, everything's going to point towards them wanting to win on Saturday and, and in front, as you say, in front of a, a, a sellout crowd. And uh, I, I think Boreham Wood could end up being sort of lambs to the slaughter a little bit. Who knows? It, you know, football is a funny thing, but. Um, there's no more incentive to win a game of football than to know that you could be crowned champion. So I think yeah. Chesterfield will do enough to win and, and I think they'll do it convincingly and win 4-1. Move on to the next game then, Dagenham versus Oldham. Oldham need to get back to winning ways and get themselves back inside the playoff spots and I think they're going to do that away at Dagenham. Dagenham are so inconsistent. We've seen at home them drop points at this season on a number of occasions. Oldham are very good away from home. I'm going to go for a 2-1 Oldham win. How do you see it going, Paul? I've gone with a 1-0 Oldham win. I don't think it's the prettiest game on this um, set of fixtures, along with the Eastley Hartlepool, which we'll do next. I think they're the two. But yeah, like you said before, Luke, Dagenham are one of those teams that probably haven't got anything to play for. They're going to just want to get, get this season done. And, and Ben Strevens is going to have to sort of go back to the drawing board and think about recruitment and and what have you, and uh, I see where they it takes them next year because they're more than capable of hitting that top end of the table and 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 getting in and around the playoffs with what they have, you know, in terms of the infrastructure and, and um, sort of history of the national league. So, yeah, it's not been a great season for them. I think Oldham have got more to play for, and that will show, and and they will win. But it's going to be a tight affair. Eastleigh versus Hartlepool then. 
Eastley need to get back to winning ways, but I don't think they're going to do it against Hartlepool. I'm back in Hartlepool to win 2 0. How do you see it going, Paul? Yeah, I've gone with the Hartlepool to win 1 0. I mean, they've had news today that Mancini and Uma are out for the rest of the season. That's not really going to help them too much. Fortunately, it's, you know, especially um, Mancini came back and, and sort of was able to help the team improve their fortunes and their form and, and keep them safe in the league and, and see whether they can build on their first season back in the National League after a couple being in the EFL. But EC got a new manager in Kelvin Davis and that new manager bounce didn't really last too long. And alongside Boreham Wood, they're the two teams that are starting to really drop in. Um, it's difficult, right? So I, I can't see Eastley winning. And it's strange for a team to be that low and have as someone of the quality of McCullum up front. So, yeah. you know, they're going to want him starting to score again. But I think Hartlepool will do enough to win. I think it's been a, a dreadful season now when you look at it for Eastley. Although they had quite a good start to the season and probably a good first half of the season where they were just outside the playoffs for the majority of it and were looking like maybe they could put a run together and get inside the playoffs. But you look at that side on paper, Boldwine came from the league above, um, Paul McCallum up top, Quigley, they're blessed with forwards. Um, Maguire as well, going forward, who's got that experience. Um, kept quite a good call and squad from last season as well. It's certainly been a very disappointing season for Eastley, and the last thing they'll want will be relegation back to the National League South, especially with the money that they've spent as well. I think they go under the radar with the actual financial resources that they've got to their disposal, especially with Stuart Donald coming back to the club. Halifax versus Ebbsfleet. Halifax are first in the form table and Ebbsfleet are second. <laughs> I don't think this is going to be an easy game. Most people might back uh, Halifax, but I'm actually going to go for a one nil draw, uh, a one all draw, sorry, <laughs> um, which might be a bit pessimistic of, of myself. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go for a one all draw. Hopefully, I'm proven wrong and Halifax win. How do you see it going, Paul? Well, I hope I haven't I haven't sort of put the kibosh on it, Luke. But I've gone with an. Yeah, you've been on uh, the Oxford win. game, so. <laughs> um. I've gone for a Halifax win. Listen, they're banging form. Like you said, they're both banging form. A, a good, probably not a good time to play Ebbsfleet if you're a Halifax, but not a good time to play Halifax if you're Ebbsfleet. So, um, you know, on paper, that's a really good game to go and watch. You know, they'll be they'll be on top form. They'll be wanting to win. Ebbsfleet are going to probably be safe now because of their run since the new managers come in, and that fair play to them. You know that they look doomed so some weeks ago. So. I think Halifax are just going to be on on their difficult pitch. You know, they're, they're used to it. They've just beaten Chesterfield in midweek. There might be a few more through the door on the on the terraces of the Shea. And, you know, they've got a lot to play for Halifax. That, that, that nugget of the, uh, of the playoffs is there. And I think that will spur them on to win 2-1. I think for me, Ebbsfleet, not this season, but I think next season, they're going to be a bit of a dark horse um, now that they've had that season in the division. You know, they've got some quality players there and they're only going to add to that squad in, in the summer. And I think what they're building there, you know, they've stuck with the manager throughout the season. So credit to them for that. I think Ebbsfleet um, will be strong next season, in my opinion. Um, next team then, Rochdale versus Maidenhead. What, maybe one of the duller games, Rochdale not got much to play for. Uh, Maidenhead, they are in the thick of it, to be fair. So probably a, quite a significant game for Maidenhead. Um, I'm actually going to go for, I'm going to go for a 2-1 Maidenhead win. Like I've said, Rochdale haven't got too much to play for. Maidenhead need to win this to get away from the drop zone. And I think they'll do that. How do you see it going, Paul? Uh, I've gone with 2-all. Um, Maidenhead always seem to pull out results when you least expect them against hard, tough opposition, which there's no denying Rochdale, Rochdale's a tough opposition away any time. You know, they've got EFL experience. The thing with Rochdale, Luke, is that they've probably not done quite as well as they maybe thought they would have done in the National League. They've had some off-the-field challenges, as we know, and um, next year they're going to just want to try and maybe just push on that a little bit more, Same, similar to Hartlepool. Um, you know, some of them Rochdale lads, we say, you know, when we say that the likes of Dagenham and Rochdale, you know, don't have a lot to play for individually. Some of these players have, they've got, they've got 
jobs to secure, contracts to secure. You know, the, there's 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 those sort of that professional um, self pride to do the best you can because you know, listen, if if someone from Rochdale plays well in a few games, someone from Dagenham, is someone from uh, Altrincham, whoever it may be plays well you know we've seen we've seen lads progress to the efl or or to to more established maybe let's want for a better phrase better national league teams than they're playing in so you know i think personal pride and professionalism and the fact that you're playing for your your future potentially is always going to play a part in games but it must be difficult when you haven't got much to play for in terms of league position so i've gone with rochdale to maidenhead to just purely because rochdale's a it's a difficult place to go, but Maidenhead do seem to be able to claw out points where you might not think they'll get them. Next game then, South End versus Working, working on brilliant form. South End, yep, unbeaten, but maybe they'd like to turn in a few of those draws into wins. I can see another draw happening here. I'm going to go for a one all draw. How do you see it going, Paul? Uh, I've, li- I've actually gone for a South End win. Um yeah. I don't know. Don't don't ask me why. I uh, I guess uh, I think you know being at home and and I just think they're just Woking are on a great run of form, um, but Southend are, are a tough cookie, and they proved that all season with the what they've had to come up against. And uh, listen, they're not going to make the playoffs now. I don't think they're going to get relegated. Some few weeks ago, we thought there there was a real threat of that, wasn't there? But uh, they've turned the corner a little bit and. I think Woking's luck will run out on Saturday and Southend will win. The certain predictions isn't the Paul. I think this is an example of that where you can't really justify your prediction, but it's kind of your gut feeling. It's like me yeah. with that Mason versus Rochdale one. It's very hard to explain it. You know, I've just got a gut feeling for certain predictions. Um, Wheelstone versus Kidderminster, though, I'm going to back. You know, no, no, no. Actually, I'm going to change that. I'm going to go for. A one-all draw. Um, I'm going to back Wheelstone, but Kidderminster drawn the last three games, I believe. Wheelstone should be fine now. Yeah, I'm going to go for a one-all draw. Um, how do you see it going, Paul? Um, I've gone probably heart overhead and gone Stones three, Wheels, uh, Wheelstone three, Kiddy one. Um, it, potentially a massive game for either club because, you know, the, they could, especially Willstone, because they could they could pull themselves away from those other teams that are playing much more difficult opposition at the weekend. You know, in that bottom four, so a pivotal game for us down at the Vale. We'd, we'd, we're half decent at home. You know, we've slipped a little bit under the new manager at home, but you know, we're not on bad form. Yeah, we got a few players missing with international duty, especially in that midfield area, but. You know, our squad has become a bit stronger over the last few weeks with a few additions. So I'm very confident that being at home at the Vale that that we will win. Um and that will really help us secure that fifty point mark, you know, go towards that fifty point mark and, and, and stay in the National League for another season. So I'm hoping it's a good game, Luke. I'm on I'm on the commentary with uh, Joe from off the line blog who's coming down for his first visit. So, you know, I'm hoping that we we've got an entertaining game to uh, to commentate on. Yeah, fingers crossed for you guys. And I believe that more or less wraps up the predictions and, of course, podcast. These are the scores on the doors for those that might have joined us later. I am winning by eight points, but Paul did get the better of me um, last week. Thank you to everyone that has, of course, tuned in tonight. It's much appreciated. Um, please remember to also like and subscribe. Like and gets it out to more people. Um, and subscribing, of course, grows the community even more. Paul, once again, thank you very much for joining me and good luck to you guys. No problem, Luke. Yeah, no, it's been another fun week to talk about National League. Well done on beating Chesterfield. Good luck to Chesterfield Saturday. I think they'll get the trophy and uh, we'll see who's in the bottom four come quarter to five. 
Yeah, it's certainly going to be interesting. We'll also see who's going to be in the top seven um, at the same time too. Yeah, good luck to Chesterfield on Saturday as well. I do believe that you'll be able to get the job done on Saturday now. Maybe it is a blessing in disguise. I think I'd rather win the title at the Shea if I was in your situation um, than win it, you know, at an away ground, um, to be honest. But yeah, good luck to you guys on Saturday. Good luck to everyone apart from Ebsfleet and Aldershot's Solial Ultranum, all the <laughs> whoever's around us, but good luck to the rest of you on Saturday. Um, and we will see you next time. Bye for now.